Yes, there is fear. Yes, there is isolation. Yes, there is panic buying. Yes, there is sickness. Yes, there is even death. But they say that in Wuhan, after so many years of noise, you can hear the birds again. They say that after just a few weeks of quiet, the sky is no longer thick with fumes, but blue and grey and clear. They say that in the streets of Assisi, people are singing to each other across the empty squares, keeping their windows open so that those who are alone may hear the sounds of family around them. They say that a hotel in the west of Ireland is offering free meals and delivery to the housebound. Today, a young woman I know is busy spreading flyers with her number through the neighborhood so that the elders may have someone to call on. Today, Churches, synagogues, mosques and temples are preparing to welcome and shelter the homeless, the sick, the weary. All over the world, people are slowing down and reflecting. All over the world, people are looking at their neighbors in a new way. All over the world, people are waking up to a new reality. To how big we really are. To how little control we really have what really matters, to love. So we pray and we remember that yes, there is fear, but there does not have to be hate. Yes, there is isolation, but there does not have to be loneliness. Yes, there is panic buying, but there does not have to be meanness. Yes, there is sickness, but there does not have to be disease of the soul. Yes, there is even death, but there can always be a rebirth of love. Wake to the choices you make as to how to live now. Today, breathe. Listen, behind the factory noises of your panic, the birds are singing again. The sky is clearing. Spring is coming. And we are always encompassed by love. Open the windows of your soul, and though you may not be able to touch across the empty square, see.
Thank you, MMI, for lighting the third candle today. No, the candle of joy, the candle of Mary. Thank you, Eden, for that wonderful song. That is one of my favorite Christmas songs. No? Mary, did you know? I really love the message of that song. Merry Christmas! This is the Christmas Sunday because this Sunday is closest to the Christmas day. No? Karon ang consider nato na Christmas Sunday. Kung wala pa'y pandemic, bibo ang tatakaroon na, no? So, anyway. So, let's celebrate Christmas today. But it would be a different celebration. Because today, we will be celebrating Christmas with the Emmanuel. So, the main reasons why we have Christmas. So, morning at I celebrate today. So, celebrating Christmas with the Emmanuel. One of the favorite lines or message of the angel to Mary was the message that telling Mary that God is with you. Kana ang pinaka importante na message no ng angel to Mary, the Lord is with you. And the message the Lord is with you is not just a message to Mary, but it is also a message to all of us. Because in Matthew 1:23 the child will be called Emmanuel, which means God with us, or God is with us. So God is not just with Mary. Dili lang kay naguban ang ginoo kay Mary, but also with us. God is also with us today. So salamat sa ginoo. So kanikaron ang atong reflection, meditation from this verse, Matthew 1:23. And this is also our theme for this whole month no, of December. No? The recognizing the Emmanuel and celebrating Christmas with the love of God. Sige. So, if you have your Bibles with you, you can follow me in... Anyway. Matthew verse, chapter 1, verse 23. Let me read the verse. Behold... The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. And they shall name him Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. This verse is directly quoted by Matthew from Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. So, gikuha lang ni Matthew, iyang gikot ang writing o ang prophecy ni Isaiah. No, in Isaiah 7 14. So because of this, uh, kay Gikuha man eh, kay Isaiah, i-click na lang, Brad. Meaning to say, the verse has three contexts. Atong lang taon. Gusto na akong bisitaan ang Toluca context. Because it was quoted from Isaiah. So originally, the verse is found in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. It has meaning in Isaiah. So what did Emmanuel mean to Isaiah? No, unang nagsulti. Ikaduha, because it was quoted by Matthew, what did Emmanuel mean to Matthew, the gospel writer? No? And because the verse said, to us, a child is born, and the meaning of that Emmanuel is God is with us, us plural, meaning to say, it has also a meaning to us. So what does Emmanuel mean to us today, especially this year that we are undergoing or experiencing pandemic. So, unsa kaha ang mga meaning aning ang Emmanuel to these three contexts? Sige. So, palihog na lang kung click the brand. Okay. Let's look at first the Isaiah's Emmanuel. Unsa meaning, anong pasabot ni Isaiah? Unsa ang context sa Emmanuel in Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah? Isaiah is telling at this time, Isaiah is ministering to the kingdom of Judah and he is ministering specifically to King Ahaz at this time. Isaiah is telling King Ahaz to trust God's, to trust God's decision and time for their salvation. Because it was the time when the Assyrian army is trying to capture the, uh, oh, no, the, the Babylonians are trying to capture not a threat against the Babylonians who will attack the Israelites or the, the, the kingdom of Judah, the southern kingdom. So, 
at this time, they are really praying and waiting for the Savior, for the Emmanuel, for the Messiah. Muna ang ilang prayer. Yun ang ipangita sa mga tao at this time. When there was a threat of the Babylonian invasion. And God tell Isaiah, and Isaiah tell to Ahaz to trust God's decision. Not to make his own decision, but to trust God and to trust God's time for the salvation and deliverance. Yet the king, instead of trusting God, he trusted his own. He, trust his, he trusted his own decision and made a treaty with Assyria. So, imbis na musalig sa Saginoo, nakipag-alliance noon siya sa another tribe, no? Ang Assyria, para mutabang sa ilaha to fight against the Babylonian. And they neglect God's word. The Lord's, das, ingon, ang, ingon sa Isaiah kay Jerima, kay, kay, Ahas, kay Ahas, the sign of God's deliverance is a child. A child would be born. They just need to wait that little time. Gamay na lang. Just wait for the deliverance. Hapit ng deliverance. Wag yun nakahulat si Ahas. Wag yun siya nakahulat. Wag yun siya nakatrust sa ginoo. He trusted his own. The Emmanuel na gisunti ni Isaiah to Judah signify the judgment to Ahas and also Assyria and deliverance of God's people. That's a very important message in Isaiah. Deliverance. God's deliverance of His people. So the Emmanuel in the context of Isaiah signify hope. This child will be their hope. And this child also signify God's grace and God's faithfulness amidst the crisis that they are facing. So kining Emmanuel, nagisulti ni Isaiah, mao ni yung tangi lang paglaong, mao ni nagsignify sa grasya sa ginoo, sa faithfulness ni God, or sa love ni God. Okay? That's the meaning, no? The, uh, the Isaiah's Emmanuel, ang, the, the Emmanuel in Isaiah's writing is a king. He is referring to a king. He is referring to a child who will be born, who will become a king. That's why ang verse... Nine, no? Nagingon siya dito, this child will be called Wonderful Counselor. The term means king's role as a political guide. So, sa ilang time, the king is called counselor. The king is considered as their guide, as a political guide. Because they were thinking of a political man, a political person, a child who will become a king, who would become a wonderful counselor for the Israelites who would be their guide and will be called a mighty God. This means extraordinary skill and strength of, a, of the king as a warrior. This king would be called mighty God. Pero tao ang ilang paglantaw ha? They are not talking about or thinking about God himself. They are thinking about a physical child who would become a king. And that this child would become mighty. Na pwede nang tawagon the mighty God. He would become a warrior. A mighty warrior. And it will be also called everlasting father. The term in Isaiah means king's fatherly concern for the well-being of his people. Meaning to say, this king, this shadow would become king. Maayo siya nga king. Would na a character of a father. Na ay concern like a father to all the Israelites. Mauni ang ilang, mauni ang ilang gipangandoy po, mauni ilang gihulat. And would be called the Prince of Peace. King's role as a promoter of peace and prosperity. Mauni nga king. And this king, mauni ni ang nagsunod na king. Kay King Ehas. Okay? No. So, the child also would be the pagkatao sa bata, kining a bata would be the end of Ahaz as king and would be the beginning of a new kingdom na naay righteousness, a kingdom na naay kahadlok sa gino, a kingdom with a king na tinuod na concern sa mga tao. So mauni ang, ang Emmanuel in the context of Isaiah. 
But in the New Testament, since it was quoted by Matthew, and Matthew said that Jesus Christ fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah. Meaning to say, there was another meaning. There was another reading of Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Nagkaroon siya ng another meaning. Kasi maura man to ang meaning sa unang panahon, ta, sa time ni Isaiah. But sa time ni Jesus Christ, Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 found another meaning. That is why it was quoted by Matthew. Ngaming ingon si Matthew, and this will be a sign for us. A virgin, a woman, who will conceive a child. And that child will be called Emmanuel, which means, ang meaning, ingon pa dito sa, sa Nasbi, when it is translated means, God with us, or God is with us. Emmanuel in Matthew is referring to Jesus Christ himself. It does not refer to any other child or any other man. It refers directly to Jesus Christ because it was Mary. Gisulti man dito that it was Mary ang nagbuntis. The Lord or the angel of the Lord appeared to Mary. So klaro nga gisulti. So it refers to Jesus Christ. Jesus is considered a king. And this is a wise and everlasting king. Like the king who is prophesied in Isaiah. He would become a king. That is why the early church or the early believers, including the disciples and the apostles of Jesus Christ, were thinking that Jesus is a political man. That Jesus would become a king, a physical king, who will reign. Israel at this time and overthrow the Roman rule, the Roman kingdom who are influencing Israel at this point of time. Because when Jesus was born, it was the time of the Roman Empire. It was the time of Caesar Augustus at that time. Under sila, na-capture naman ni ang the whole area, no? Sa Palestine and Mesopotamia at that time were under the Roman rule under the Roman Empire. So they were thinking that someone in Israel will become a king and will overthrow the kingdom of Rome. Muna ang ilang paghuna-huna. Pero di na mao si Jesus. That is why, naanap po another meaning sa Emmanuel, the third meaning, the Emmanuel to us. Because the, the Emmanuel and Matthew, they were still thinking of a political man, of a political person. Okay. Yes, si Jesus dili man political person. He died. He did not become a king. Nga ilang gi celebrate like any other nations. And this Emmanuel will be called the Messiah. His another name is Messiah, the anointed one. That is why Matthew said he is the fulfillment of the Old Testament. Because the Old Testament does not just prophesying Emmanuel, they are also prophesying the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Christ, who will become the Savior of the world. But still, in the context of Matthew, they were still thinking of a political man who will become great, not just in Israel, but also influencing the whole world. And Redeemer, he will become a Redeemer, a Savior. That is why yung name Jesus. Jesus means Savior or God saves. That's the meaning of the name Jesus. He would become a Savior. Again, the context of Matthew were thinking, become Jesus would become a Savior to Israel. They were not thinking of Jesus becoming a Savior to the world and Savior from sin. They were thinking of a Savior from political oppression. But what is our Emmanuel? What is the third meaning? The third reading of the verse? Diba? The first reading was Isaiah 7.14. The context, Isaiah and King Ahaz. And the king after Ahaz. Yun ang fulfillment. Now sa Matthew, it was Jesus, the birth of Jesus Christ. And they are still thinking of a political Jesus Christ. In wala nahitabo ang political Christ. 
because the book of Matthew ended with Jesus' death, namatay. Wala na himong king. Pero dili, kamatayon ang ending sa Matthew. But the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus was resurrected and become alive again. Meaning to say, there was another reading. That is why, na ikatulong reading of Matthew chapter 1, 23. And the third reading is the reading of the church. Our Emmanuel. That Jesus Christ is our Emmanuel. Who is Jesus as our Emmanuel? The Emmanuel means God was with us literally. So, unata sa literal na meaning. God was literally with us when Jesus Christ came to earth. It refers to the incarnation. Ang theological term is incarnation. Karon atong celebrate Christmas ang atong term. But the early church, ang ilang term ang nga season is incarnation. We are celebrating the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Incarnation means be- God become or assume flesh. Become flesh from the word carne. No, means flesh, unod. God become flesh. Or God was with us in the flesh. That's the meaning. <clears throat> so we'll celebrate it today as Christmas. Dili it's a birthday ni Jesus Christ. So let me correct. Because there are some, may ngon ang uba na, oh, why the free method is celebrate Christmas? Na dili naman talaga tinuod. Dili naman talaga, wala mang siya na established that Jesus was born on December. So, that's very ko ah, dili gina siya klaro na wala na evidence or wala bay klaro na gisulti that Jesus was born in December. What we celebrate is not the actual birth like our birthday. It's not the day. We celebrate the incarnation. This is the reason of our celebration. We celebrate the incarnation. We celebrate God becoming human. We celebrate those processes. We celebrate those mystery. Na Jesus Christ become human. Na himo siyang tao, di ba? So the incarnation, the Christmas, this is also a demonstration of God's love. The early church, pilaka century, ang pagtanaw nila sa Christmas, sa incarnation, was a demonstration of God's love. That is why Bishop Jim decided na ang theme that we would celebrate this Christmas is celebrating Christmas with God's love. That's really true. That's the message of the early church for many centuries that Christmas is the demonstration of God's love. What is the reason why God, why Jesus become human? Because He loves us. Because He loves you. He loves the world. That's our third reading of Emmanuel. So karon ay baon nata that the Emmanuel means literally Jesus become human. Kay giingon po na sa Philippians na he is very God. He is God. God is the spirit. No flesh and blood and bones. Yet he assume flesh, blood and bones and become like us. Mauni siya ang unang meaning sa Emmanuel. Okay. Jesus is the only reason for Christmas. That's really true. That is why mauni siya ang tinuod na meaning sa Christmas. Si Jesus Christ. Because we celebrate the incarnation. Jesus is the only reason. Last Sunday, if you follow Bishop Alan, so, ang walil Bishop Alan last Sunday, sa live stream, na di ba, murag ang atong iyon, this is Christmas, uh, the new normal. Christmas in the new normal. And some said this is the abnormal Christmas. But this, they call the abnormal Christmas, the new normal Christmas, this is the normal Christmas. Muni tinood na Christmas. Nadili lang puro kasadya. Alam mo, uh, last, we, we celebrate Christmas at LLC last Friday. But very different. Kasi virtual. And we receive a guidelines from DepEd. And one of the guidelines, bawal pati exchange gift. Bisag, dili gid mag-exchange. I-drop lang ang gift dito sa office. Ya, kinsay nakakuha ato, pick up on sa nanay, ihatag siyang anak. Bawal yan! Because, according to DepEd, 
Malay mo kung may virus yung gift. Ndo nakadikit. Unya, gikuha gihatod sa ilang balay. Then you send the virus to the house. So bawal pati Christmas gift. So nakaanak ko huna huna, bawal ang Christmas gift, bawal manganta kay na iba kong rule karon, bawal talsik laway ingon nila. Eh mo kanta ta talsik man laway. Bawal yan. Bawal ng kantahan, bawal video kay. Bawal na gift. Bawal na pod mag bawal manginvite og silingan to your house. Kaya basing nagdala og virus o basing na virus sa inyong balay, madala sa ilang balay. So bawal na magparty-party. So unsa na lay di bawal? Sa Christmas. Reflecting Jesus Christ. Meditating on the message of the Christmas, the Emmanuel. O di ba, hingbalik kita sa unsay normal, unsay tinuod, unsay insakto. So this Christmas Mauna ni ang the most meaningful Christmas of all. Since our birth. Kaya naano ba yata sa Christmas no nga? Kuan? Bibo kaayo. Karon kita kita ra di ay. So mauni ang Christmas. Now let's celebrate this Christmas with one guest in our house. The Emmanuel. Because he is the reason for Christmas. Nakahuna-huna ko. Nanilos na gud siguro ang ginuo sa ato no si Jesus Christ. Kasi for many years we celebrate Christmas. Si Jesus ba gud na celebrate? O kita ang uh, mas kita ang nag-enjoy. Mo di ba mo kita ang nag-enjoy no? Enjoy ta sa mga regalo, nag-enjoy ta kinahanglan na ay lechon, nag-enjoy ta spaghetti, sa salad, mo mo man ato enjoy no. So muna sa Manila, punuan ng Divisoria, yan, Tapaklaran, mall, karon bawal sa mall. Nakaana ko, nanilos na yun ang ginoo. Hingabot na yun sa punto nga, huwag na ginalipay ang ginoo sa ato. Hey, balik na yun sa tinuod na celebration sa Christmas. This Christmas is the most unique. This Christmas is the wonderful Christmas of all time. Amen? Ayun mo pong ingon na sa TV, mara na ako yung nabati sa TV kagahapon, masyur to nga. This is the craziest Christmas. This is the saddest Christmas. I don't agree with that. This is the most beautiful Christmas. Because we will be celebrating the Emmanuel. Amen? Wa na tayo choice. Wala na yung options. Kaya naan nag- nag-ingon na hindi pwede ba? Wala mga bata. So, wala na gito yung options. Dak punta. <laughs> Muna kami. O, sige. Wala. So, ang Christmas, virtual. O. Puro na lang ta picture-picture. Bawal po ta mag-post ng picture nito sa Facebook. Kaya basic. Nga nung nag-uban-uban mo mo. So, ha? So, humanaming Christmas sa LLC. And it is virtual. Ayan. So, unya ang mga faculty nag- Kuan po mi? Kaon-kaon po mi? Pero gamay rakit kayo. Namong gikao, namong gi-order mo ana gyud. Paniod to ra gyud na normal. Mm. Yeah, social distancing. Ana gyud. So lahi ra gyud. So we just spend Christmas celebrating Christmas reflecting in how the Lord was with us beginning sa pandemic until today. And the sharing was so wonderful. Grabe kanindot ang nahitabo hinoon sa among Christmas. God with us means God is right there with you every day of your life if you are truly safe according to Sean Thomas. I quoted him because I like after the if. Look at the if. God with us means God is right there with you every day of your life. We say amen. Pero nasa condition. If you are truly saved Meaning to say, you only experience Emmanuel if you are truly saved. If you are truly saved, then God is there with you every day, in your life, everywhere. Nag-uban siya sa atua. He become an Emmanuel tinuod when we are truly saved. So Jesus is literally in us because we received Him. Nasa sa ito, di ba? Na ganito ay kanta na He lives in me. Dako siya pero nagpuyo sa akong kasing-kasing in my heart. 
So He is here with us. He is in us when we are saved. So Jesus is in me and with you and with me all the time. Mauni ang atong celebrate, Mauni ang atong gimeditate karon na Pasko. God with us. Second, third, God with us. It is an assurance. The term God with us is an assurance. Why is this an assurance? God is with us through the Holy Spirit. Or this is a principle. Because the, the physical Jesus is not with you. Di mo gina makita ang physical Jesus, di ba? Ang Emmanuel sa context ni, ni, ni Matthew is a physical man. Tinood na tao. Nga ilang nakauban. Pero di mo na makauban today. This is a principle. This is the truth. This is a reality we celebrate. And this is also an assurance. Kaya nag-ingon siya, the Holy Spirit is there with us. Ang nag nato. God was with His people in the Old Testament. Di ba? Kung ingon ta, God is with us. And dito sa kuan, dito lang sa start dito sa Matthew chapter 123. What about before Matthew 123? Wala ba nag ng ginoo? nag na. God was there. From the beginning of the world, God, from the beginning of humanity, God was already there. Gikan sa unang tao sa kalibutan na nang ginoo nag Meaning to say, God was with His people in the Old Testament times. God was there. God was with them in Egypt. God was with them in the wilderness. God was with them in Canaan. God was with them in Babylon. In all situations, God was there. God was with them. Even if they did not acknowledge Him. Even kaniwa nila acknowledge si God, God was with them. Nag-uban ka po ng ginusa ilaha. And God was with them in all situations. Nag-uban ang ginoo in all situations. Okay? So in Matthew 28.20, ingon si Jesus Christ, I am with you to the end of the age. So, this is, di ba, ingon lang dito sa 123, God is with us, physical. Pero miingon si Jesus Christ, mag-uban ko sa inyo ha, hangtod sa katapusan sa panahon. Ang physical na Jesus died after 30 years, 33 years. Human siya na himugso. He died. Wala na. And yet, the presence of God, yun siya, I will be with you until the end of the age. Both ipasabot, matapos na lang tatanan, di pa matapos ang kalibutan. Meaning to say, from our birth, to our death, the Lord is with us. Walay minute, walay day, that God is na, wala nag-uban sa ato kadausan. Okay. Ay. Next slide, Brad. Okay. God is with us. So, but, siguro makapangutan na ta. If God is with us, why pandemic? And we thought that the pandemic was just one month or two months. Pero karon December na, from April to December. Sa January, wala na ba? Wala pa. Yung pag mga doktor, baka mga three years pa. Wow, three years pa. So if God, siguro mo na ito if God is with us, why this pandemic? Why I am sick? I pray. I serve the Lord. Why I am sick? Why my loved one died? We pray. We do our part. We do everything. Why? Still, our loved one died. Why I lost job? Why lots of suffering? Kung nag-uban ang ginoo, why lots of suffering? Di ba? And we have a lot of whys. Naghanta pa na, why Lord? Why Lord? Again, tinuod ba itong gi-establish sa Biblia na ang Diyos nag-uban na to, from birth to death? Na by time nga wala siya mag-uban? Wala. He is the with us. Ingon pa mag sa Old Testament, even if they did not acknowledge God, God was with them. Even if you say, di, di na ko, di kinanglan ang ginoo. But still, God is with you. Did you remember my first sermon no, on the first Sunday of January? His goodness is running after us. 
Diba? So even if we don't like God, even if dito mag-serve kay God, even if nag-backslide ka, God is still running after you. God's still with you. Yung upanan gihapon ka sa ginoo. Yung panalangin na gihapon ka sa ginoo. O gitawag gihapon ta sa ginoo. See? So walay minute. Walay moment. Walay gap. That the Lord is not with us. Pero ang tanong, nga nung naaman ni ina niya panghitabo, kung ang ginoo naguban. Ang suno ng pangutana, nagsulti ba ang Biblia nga kung ang ginoo maguban sa imo, everything is okay? Everything will be fine? Nawala'y problema? Mo ba nagitudlo sa Biblia? Dili. Look at the Old Testament. The Lord was with the Israelites. Na uh, God was with them in Egypt. What ba sila nag-suffer sa Egypt? They were there in Egypt for many years as a slave. Naa sila sa wilderness. God was with them in the wilderness. What ba sila problem in the wilderness? Gikapoy sila, gigutom sila, gipaak sila, bitin. They experience it. And then experience pa nilang na-capture sila sa Babylon. Gisunog ang, ang, ang Judah. Ang Jerusalem. Ang Temple of Jerusalem was destroyed by the enemy. Gisunog. The gates. All the people were captured. Some died. But the Lord was with them. So nga nung naman yung panghitabo, because all of those things, the pandemic, the flood, the earthquake, and disasters, and all other things, the negative is part of the fallen world. Yun ang normal sa fallen world. After Genesis chapter 3, that describes humanity. That describes the world. So yun ang normal sa kalibutan. Ang bagyo, ang baha, ang sakit, ang pandemic, kamatayon, suffering. Yun ang normal in the world. And since we are in the world, we are not exempted. Even if we are Christian, even if we are strong Christian, we live a holy life. And yet, we are not exempted of those things because we are in the world. And that's part of the world. That's the characteristics of the world. That is why God said, I am with you. What's the reason why God will go with us? Unsang reason na gikinanglan o bananta sa ginoo? Unsang reason that His goodness will run after us? Kay haya-haya tong life? No, that's not the reason. He is with us because He is our deliverance. Di ba? The, the, the Emmanuel in Isaiah means a deliverance. Their deliverer. And the same context, sa Matthew, when Matthew said, He is the Emmanuel, He also speaks of deliverance. And today, He is the same. He is our deliverance. Deliverance from what? Deliverance from all oppression, from sin, from darkness, from pain, and all types of enslavement. Jesus is our deliverer. He is our deliverance. His name means salvation. He is our salvation. He is the Messiah. He is the anointed one. He is our salvation. Salvation from what? Again, salvation from sin, salvation from harm, salvation from danger, from salvation from any other thing. And He is our assurance. Assurance na naa siya nag even during those times. Iubananta sa ginoo. Paano mo nalaman or how can you say God is with you during the pandemic? What are the signs? Now you can say, Oh, God is with me. Remember in the Old Testament, when they say, God is with me, God is with us, there is a physical sign. Diba? In, in the wilderness, they have the clouds is the physical sign that God was with them. The provisions is a sign that God was with them. Pag cross nila sa Red Sea, diba? Nahati ang Red Sea. That was a physical sign that God was with them. 
Itong wali ni Marian when they crossed the, the flooded Jordan River. That was a sign that God was with them. There is always the physical sign. What about us? What's the sign? Why you can say, God is with you, even during the pandemic? Or the kuban pagit ang ginoo, do you believe that God was with you even during this pandemic? Gikan atong April until today? Okay? Yes? Yes. Kami pud, I would say, God is with us. God was with us even during this pandemic. And God portrayed a lot of signs na ma-feel nato that God is really with us. Amen? Isa sa signs, buhi tahan to drone. Nakaselebrate pa taan na Christmas because God is with us. So during the pandemic, April to December, di ba? Have you seen your Emmanuel? Nakita ba ni mo ang imong Emmanuel? Amen? Have you seen God is with you? Yes, I have seen my Emmanuel. I hope you have seen your Emmanuel during the pandemic. And this is the reason why we celebrate the Christmas. Okay? It's not the birth, it's not the birthday. We celebrate His coming. Because His coming to us equals our salvation. And it deserves a celebration. Amen? So my prayer... I hope we will not be like those people in TV uh, or sa Facebook nga nag-ingon, this is the craziest Christmas, this is the loneliest Christmas, this is the dagang pangit na Christmas. No, this is a beautiful Christmas because we will celebrate this season, this Christmas with the Emmanuel. Pwede na gihapon na ilitson. <laughs> Pwede na gihapon na spaghetti, di ba? Pwede na gihapon maghanda. No? But the main reason why we celebrate is because of the Emmanuel. God is with us. Amen? And let's thank the Lord. Now we will celebrate Christmas today. Unsang adlawan ng atong actual na Christmas? Wednesday? No? Oh, uh, so Wednesday. Wednesday sa gabi e. Ang ato. Uh, Thursday? Oh, na, nakalimutan ko sa kalendaryo. Pasensya na. So, <laughs> let's celebrate that day reflecting the message of God. Last Friday, ang among celebrate sa LLC with the question, Kinesia, have you seen your Emmanuel? How? How did you see your Emmanuel? It's a good sharing time. And you can use that question during, as you celebrate, diha sa inyong panimalay. Just ask everyone, have you seen your Emmanuel? How did you see your Emmanuel? How did he reveals to you na nag-uban siya sa imoha during this time? And together in the family, thank the Lord because he is there with us. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you God for sending your son, Jesus Christ, for us. We celebrate Christmas we celebrate, Lord, today, our Emmanuel. You are with us. And we just thank you, Lord, that you never, never leave us. Wala gid ka ginuming biya na mo, Lord. Bisa na mga panahon that we thought nga gibiyaan minimo. But the reality, your word said, I am with you wherever you go. Every moment of our lives, naguban ka, Lord. And that's the reason why we celebrate the Christmas. And we just thank you, Father, because we receive already our gift, the gift of life, the gift of eternal life, our salvation, is a wonderful gift we receive from you. That gift is priceless. We cannot pay it. We thank you, God, for giving it to us for free. And we enjoy it. And because we are saved, then we can say also that the Lord is with me, is with us every moment of our lives. Lord, we experience the pandemic. 
We experience sickness. We experience death of our loved ones. We experience flood, earthquake. We lost the thing. We lost opportunities. And many other things, Lord, na nawala sa mga. But salamat, Lord, one thing we did not lost. One thing na nawala sa amo, Lord, na nagpabilin sa amo, is your presence. And we thank you and we celebrate, Lord, that we never, never lost your presence. We never lost your love. We never lost your goodness. We never lost your mercy. Because they are running after us every day. Naghan ka yung salamat, Lord. And that's what we celebrate. Your goodness. Your love. Your loving kindness. Your faithfulness. Na among nasinati ni ini nga panahon. We thank you and we praise you. And give us opportunity also, Lord, to extend such love to others this season. Especially those people who feel so sad, who feel so down, who feels they are being neglected. Help us to reach out, to share something, to share what we have, so that they will also experience and see the Emmanuel na among nakita o among nasinati. Salamat, Lord, sa oportunidad ni among gihatag ka nam. Bless us all. Bless us, Father, our family, our loved ones. Bless this church. Bless all of us. All this we ask and pray in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All of us will say, Amen. Indeed, it is good to be in the presence of the Lord this Sunday morning. Five days to go and it's Christmas. Even though Christmas is quite different this year, but the true essence of Christmas is still filled by us. For His love overflows and He is always with us. Ingnay mong katapad, Merry Christmas! Kay Merry Gihapon ang Christmas sa mga anak sa Ginoo. Thank you everyone for worshiping with us today. For those who have come for the first time and sa mga nagbalik na og Simba, thank you for spending your Sunday with us. We hope that we can see you the next Sundays to come. And my prayer is that everyone is filled by God's love this Sunday morning. Thank you also, MMI, for lighting the Advent Candle of Joy. And thank you, Ate Den, for the song you have rendered. Salamat kaayo. And for our announcements, encouraging everyone to join our Sunday school classes after our first service, 8.45 to 9.45 a.m. And we have our online Sunday services, 7.30 to 8.30 and 9.30 to 10.30 every Sunday. Please do visit our FB page and our YouTube channel. Our online children ministry continues. Please let your children watch our quarantine club every Sunday, 11 a.m. in our FB page and YouTube channel. And to all our board members who are here right now, we will have a board meeting this afternoon at 2 p.m. Your presence is highly appreciated. And for those who want to bless others, for they are so blessed by God this year, you can extend your blessing by giving in kinds, clothes, or cash for our gift-giving activity this coming December 23. The recipient of this will be the girls of Home for Girls and some families in our outreach sa Pagatpatan Church. And please drop any that you want to extend in the pastor's office, kay office ni Bishop. And or you can approach Kuya Don and Ati Jocelyn Padilla directly. May we be a reason to put smiles on the faces of the girls and families as we shared to them the blessing that we received this Christmas. And this Wednesday, we don't have a midweek service, but on Thursday, December 24, 
we will have our Christmas Eve service at 6 to 7 p.m. So let us come together and celebrate as a family. And we also have our New Year's service, New Year's Eve service on December 31 at 6 to 7 p.m. And we would also like to thank everyone for being faithful in bringing back his tithes and being generous in giving our offerings. You can drop his tithes and your offerings as you exit on the box provided sa tong exit doors. And in our bulletins, in there is an envelope with the caption, My Birthday Offering for Jesus. Put any amount that you, your heart desires as an expression of your gratefulness to Him. For He is with us and He loves us so much. No? Nabati, manggit na to ang gugma sa atong buhi nga Diyos. Karon nga mga panahon na, in spite of the pandemic, God has blessed us. We are still alive and He is with us. He protected us and as an expression of our love to Him, you can put anything that you'd like no so akong gihangyo ang tanan if you have received those sa wala na ay dito as uh, i will call by your birth month so that dili ta magdasok diri sa ato bangan magmaintain lang gihapunta sa atong physical distance as we drop our birthday offerings to Jesus so as we start may we call on Sa tanan na birthday of January, if na ay mga nag birthday of January dere, the boxes sa ato ang Thanksgiving uh, birthday offering to Jesus is na adere sa front na ay upat para di lang tamag magkadasok. And kung walay January at tuto sa mga Pebrero dehang dapita, if na ay mga nag birthday of Pebrero, no you can drop any amount that you'd like and sa mga March sa mga nag-birthday of March I know that the Lord has been so good to us and sa April mga nag-birthday of April sa mga nag-birthday of May, mga Mayo. Mga June babies, kung naaman diri ah, no? Mga nag-birthday of June. July. August. September Sa mga nag-birthday o October de hang dapita And sa bulan sa Nobyembre Mga November babies. And lastly, sa nag-birthday sa bulan sa Disyembre. Labi na siguro tong nag-birthday git sa December 25, no? Salamat sa ginoo sa inyuhang mga kinabuhi. And I know that God will continue to bless us and God will continue to be with us even in times like this and the following days of our life. May God bless us all. Requesting everyone to please stand up as we sing our last song. Ina daw yung tapad ba God is with us. God is with you. God is with us. Amen. Where I walk, 
Amen. He felt what I feel. He walked where I walk. He walked where I walk. He stood where I stand. He stood where I stand. He felt what I feel. He felt what I feel. He understands. He knows my frailty. He knows my frailty. Shared my humanity. Tempted in every way, tempted in every way, yet without seeing. God with us, so close to us. God with us, Emmanuel. Oh, God with us, so close to us. God with us. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, one of a hated race, one of a hated race, stung by the prejudice, stung by the prejudice, suffering injustice, suffering injustice, yet he forgives, wept for my wasted years. Paid for my wickedness. He died in my place. That I might live. God with us, so close to us. God with us, Emmanuel. Thank you, God. Your name is Emmanuel. You are with us, O oh God. And Lord, as we depart from this place, may your presence be with us, Lord God. Lord, thank you, God, that this week, Lord, we will continue to provide all our needs. And bless those people, O oh God, who are travel. Thank you, Lord, for the safety, O oh God, who are going to Lord. And next Sunday, Lord God, we will Lord in the church. In the joy of hearts, O oh God, to honor you, to worship you. And again, Father God, Thank you for your presence in our worship today. Let us receive our benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lay up His countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Emmanuel, God with us.